Senator Cornyn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Professor Bridges, you, in your testimony, talked about the prevalence of abortion, um, the percentage of black babies that are uh, aborted as opposed to non-black babies. I think you said uh, three or four times more black babies than non-black babies are aborted. Um, you also talk about systemic racism. Do you see any systemic racism associated with the prevalence of abortion for black babies as opposed to non-black babies? Um, absolutely. Um, the higher rates of unintended pregnancy that lead to higher abortion rates among black people um, is a result of structural racism, systemic racism. Um, I understand systemic racism not to be boogeymen who are trying to uh, dupe black people into abortion care. I understand structural racism to be the systems that have made it so that black people disproportionately bear the burdens of poverty in this country, um, the systems that have denied them the basics that they need in order to, to live humane lives like food, clothing, shelter, health care, so you believe system that, you be that responds with the criminal You believe legal there system. ought to be more black babies aborted, is that right? I believe that, that we ought to create the conditions under which people can leave li lead lives that are filled with dignity and humanity. And that to means your, being to able your way to, of thinking, that happens when more black babies are aborted. I believe, I trust, I love black people with the capacity for pregnancy. I think they have agency, they have intelligence, they know what is best for themselves, and I would love to create the conditions under which they can live lives that are filled with dignity and humanity. And do you think a, do you think a, a baby that is delivered alive has value? Yes. Do you think that a, a, a baby that is not yet born has value? I believe that a person with a capacity for pregnancy has value. They have intelligence. They have agency. They no, have I'm dignity. talking about the baby. And I'm talking about the person with a capacity for and I'm, pregnancy. And you're not answering the question. I'm asking. I'm, you I'm, think answer, that a, I'm answering you, a more interesting you think question that, to you me. You think that a baby that is not yet born, let's say the day before the mother delivers, do you think that baby has value? I think that the person with the capacity for pregnancy has value, and they have the they should have the ability to control what happens to their lives. Well, and and I just note you refuse to answer the question, uh, Ms. Harrell. The Declaration of Independence talks about certain unalienable rights: life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When do you think that unalienable right to life? attaches. Thank you. Yes, life is a human right. Um, and when I answered Senator Booker's question earlier that I think our laws should protect all human life, I think I was, I was focusing on the heart part, and I didn't mean to suggest that it's a, uh, it's a matter of congressional authority to, do, uh, to enact the law that you described. Um, but I do think that the American people understand that you have no rights if you don't have the right to life. That is a principle that our nation was founded upon, and every human being from its earliest existence has its own DNA and has a, a future. If we don't extinguish it, has a future, and that is a human right. It is the values and mores, as Senator Cruz was speaking of, that goes back to the founding of our nation, even at common law, and all the way up until 1973, when those life-affirming laws in 46 states were turned on their heads by the Supreme Court. So I believe that's what the American people believe, Life is a human right. Governor Stratton, as I listen to your testimony, it seems to me that you're advocating for abortion uh, at any time, for any reason, at any point during a woman's pregnancy. Is that correct? What I'm advocating for is for everyone to have the right to determine what's best for their life, their at body, any, and their future. At any future. time, at any point in the pregnancy. Is that correct? I'm advocating for everyone to have the right to make the personal decision about what's best for their life, their body, and their future. I don't, everyone should have that right. Do you not understand my question? My question is, are you advocating that a right, there's a right to abortion at any time, for any reason, at any point during a pregnancy? I'm not sure if you understand my answer, but what I'm saying no, is I, that- No, I understand that you're okay. not answering the question. Then we're- I, and what, what, I, what's, what amazes me is the advocacy for unlimited abortion rights where there is zero value 
placed on an unborn child. I think Senator Cruz pointed out, obviously, abortion is a very emotional and divisive issue in our society. One reason why we haven't had conversations like this is because the Supreme Court has said you can't talk about it because it's out of bounds. It's in the Constitution, as opposed to it being decided in a forum, uh, a legislative forum like, like the states. Um, but what I don't understand is the argument that a unborn child has zero value the day before it's delivered, but then has value the day after it's born. Ms. Matsky, can you, uh, can you help uh, explain that? Thank you so much, Senator. Yes, I actually can. Um, as a matter of fact, here in California, there's a law that's about to be passed called AB 2223. And this law basically will allow, as a woman is in the midst of a chemical abortion and she delivers a baby alive on the floor at any stage of pregnancy or in a hospital, um, that baby, if this law is passed, has the ability to be born alive and left to die. Um, no matter what, a baby in the womb or outside of the womb has value. And we are not just talking about the value of a life in the womb right now. We are also talking about the value of a, of a life in California after it is born and allowing it to die up to 28 days after birth. Thank you. As we've heard today in testimony, uh, both from my colleagues and from the 